Hello. Welcome to the messiest of all messes, also known as glaze mixing. So today I am going to show you how to mix a glaze from raw materials, specifically fat cream, which is a cone six oxidation glaze. So, the things you're going to need to mix your dry glaze, um, and depending on how much you're mixing, uh, you might not need some of these, such as this big bowl, but you're going to need 100% of the time, unless you're formulating your own, a dry glaze recipe. Um, and my favorite source for these is glazy.org. Um, but there's also, you know, a ton of other websites that you can get these dry glaze recipes from. Uh, Pinterest is a good one. Uh, John Britt's um, Guide to, I think it's Guide to Mid-Range Glazes is a really good one. Um, or, you know, you might go to school somewhere that uh, mixes their own glazes and you can see the recipes and you might want to recreate one of those at home. So. This glaze is for fat cream, as I told you before, and here is a test style for it. I'm not sure how well you can see that because it's on porcelain. Um, it's just a nice, glossy white. I found that it's super consistent almost 100% of the time. You get predictable results. Um, it doesn't really crawl. It can be applied thick or thin. It's just a really easy glaze to work with. And so next, you'll probably need a bowl and you're going to use your scoop with your bowl and your scoop you're just going to use to shovel the dry glaze materials into the bowl here. And the bowl is going to sit on a gram scale. So the gram scale is going to measure how many grams of glaze that you're putting into this bowl. So, for example, the first ingredient in the fat cream glaze here is nef nefsai. So, what you're going to do is get your nefsai and you're going to tear your bowl. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And then you're just going to start measuring your glaze into the amount of the batch that you want. Now, dry glaze recipes usually come in 100 gram batches. Um, just by default. And so the 100 gram batch I use for making tests, test tiles, and then the rest of the leftover, I don't know if you can see it, it goes into my like reclaim glaze bucket. Um, so another important thing to do is get a Sharpie and label both the lid and the actual bucket part of your five gallon bucket so that you're not losing um, or you're unsure what a glaze is. So the one thing that is absolutely imperative to mixing your glaze at home with dry materials is a glaze sieve. So the glaze sieve basically breaks up clumps of those dry materials and really mixes them together very well. So. This is a lab sieve, um, and this is an 80 mesh sieve. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's an 80 mesh sieve. A lot of people do their dry glazes through a 40 mesh sieve and then an 80 mesh, but I do it twice through the 80 mesh because Jess Putnam Phillips basically made the point of, if you're doing it through 80 once, you might as well just do it through 80 twice. And also that leaves less for me to clean up at the end. So. That being said, let's get started. So, hi. Um, another thing I forgot to mention is you should always have a dust mask on. And I would recommend something a little bit better than this. Um, probably one of the better respirator type masks. Unfortunately, this is what was available to me today. So, um, in the future, you know, that's what I'm going to be wearing. But for today, I have this mask on and just know that it's really important 
to wear your mask and be really safe because you don't want any of the silica dust from any of the materials that you're using to be inhaled into your lungs. And that's really important for your health because silica, the lungs can't remove it. You know, it's not like smoking. And I don't know if you can see, but I'm making 8,000 grams of this glaze. And 8,000 grams is generally enough to fill up a five gallon bucket. So the 8,000 grams um, is the total amount I'm mixing. And what I love about glazy.org is that you can put your total desired batch into the bottom here. And this is just a screenshot from my computer. You can put the total grams that you want in the bottom area here. And then it tells you how much you need of each material without you having to do the calculations. So to tear your scale, which I told you I would show you how to do. Um, you're gonna take your gram scale, and before you turn it on, place your bowl on the scale. And what that's going to do is the scale is going to turn on and it's going to subtract this weight of the bowl from your total uh, amount of grams that you're measuring. So if you leave the bowl on the scale before you turn it on, you won't have to manually tear it and the scale will just say zero. Let me turn this on. Okay, and you see there, I'm not sure if you can see it. Let me try and zoom in. You can faintly see it there. There is a zero right there, which means that we are not currently measuring anything. Zero grams. It's teared. And that's how you know if you're starting out on the right foot. So, my first ingredient in the fat cream recipe here is 3,302 grams of nefsi. Well, specifically 3,302.75 grams of nefsi. So, I'm just going to bend down here and find my raw materials that I need. Here is my big old bag of nefsi. And so what you're gonna do is just be gentle when you're opening these, just so you, you know you don't uh, fling any of the uh, powder into the air accidentally. Uh, that's also really important is to avoid disturbing a ton of this stuff. And I'm gonna put some gloves on probably a good idea to wear your gloves. Um, if you don't have them, it's not a super emergency, but you know, to stay safe, it's better to wear your gloves when handling raw materials. thousand three hundred and two grams. I'm opening up the bag very gently. Gonna take your scoop, make sure to clean. Um, so three thousand three hundred and two grams of nesti. So I'm not sure what the max capacity of this scale is. Okay, so important tip. I I am really close to the measurement I want right now. The amount in grams converted to pounds that I need because I switched my scale to pounds is 7.281. So I have seven and 1.1. So it's very important that you don't continue dumping at a vigorous pace. You just take a little bit in your scoop and just begin to kind of feather it onto the top so you don't go over the amount. Um, it's better to put too little than too much and then have to scoop it back into the bag. So, okay, so I have the amount that I wanted measured into my bowl here. And let me take you down to my bucket. And, Here's my bucket, all nice and labeled. 
And so what I'm going to do is ever so gently place this in here without disturbing the dust a lot and slowly dump it out. Just tap it a little bit and there we go. Not too much dust and um, and we're going to just measure out all the materials like that on our scale and I will come back to you when I have everything measured. Welcome back friends. So um, we have all of our dry ingredients here in the bucket. Oop, you can't see that. We have all of our dry materials in the bucket and it's a good thing to get in the habit of taking a whisk and just mixing the uh, dry materials um, before we start adding water to this. Um, just be gentle um, and you don't need to obviously do an extremely thorough job of this because we're going to be sieving it anyway but this will make it easier in the long run to incorporate all the materials. So, what I'm going to do now is just add some water to this. I'm going to do that all so I'm just giving it a quick mix here. Um, if you have a baker's whisk, <laughs> it's probably better than a giant piece of wood like I'm using, but I don't have a giant whisk. So I'm just mixing the best I can initially with the big stick here. So obviously we didn't add a specific amount of water to this and that's just because this is just the initial mixing of the glaze with the water. I will show you at the end how to tell how thick your glaze is without having a hydrometer. I don't use a hydrometer and I'm pretty familiar with this glaze. Um, and I'm gonna show you how to test the glaze thickness and either add water or let water evaporate off. And the first time you're mixing this, if you have like little chunks floating around at the top, don't worry too much about that. Um, the sieve is really gonna take care of those. So don't feel panicked if you have, you know, giant chunks of separated raw materials floating on your glaze. Okay, so I have an empty spare bucket here, nice and clean, along with a clean lab sieve. And what I'm going to do is take the glaze from this bucket that we just uh, did a quick mix with, and I'm going to dump a little bit into the lab sieve here, and I'm going to push it through the mesh screen into this bucket. So, another tip. Be careful not to overfill this lab sieve because if you overfill it right up to the top, you're gonna be splashing glaze all over the floor and that's gonna be a waste. So don't overfill. Okay, so right there is the glaze that I just sieved once. And what I'm going to do is take that glaze that we sieved once and sieve it back through in the original bucket through the 80 mesh sieve for a second time. If you still have chunks in your glaze after the second sieve, you may want to sieve it back into the other bucket again but I'm just gonna sieve that through one more time and then I will be back. Okay, so this is what we are left with. And 
This has been sieved twice and you can see it filled up the five gallon bucket pretty decently. The reason you don't want to fill the five gallon bucket up all the way to the top is because if you're dipping larger pieces in the glazes, then you don't want the glaze to overflow onto the floor. So I'm going to show you really quick a really easy way to test your glaze thickness. And since I'm familiar with this glaze, I'll tell you that this glaze likes to be a medium viscosity or that of heavy cream. So I'm going to take my finger here and I'm going to dip it in and I'm going to look. Is it covering the lines in my fingers and generally covering the lines where my fingernail is? Yes. So I know that that means that I need to add some more water to this glaze. And what you want to do is add water until you dip your finger in and you see a hint of lines in your fingers and where your fingernail would be. So basically, if you dip your finger in heavy cream and you look at how it looks on your finger, you want your glaze to be, at least specifically for fat cream, that exact consistency. So let's say you accidentally dumped too much water in your glaze. What that would look like is you dip your finger in and it runs off your finger and you can see your skin uh, pretty well and it doesn't really look like it's sticking to your finger at all. So if you mix too much water into your glaze, what you can do is just leave the lid off for a few days, come back and check it every day, obviously stir the particles that have settled at the bottom, give it a good mix, dip your finger in again, and if it looks like the consistency of heavy cream, then go ahead and put the lid on. If it does not look like that, it's still very runny, leave the lid off for an extra day, and so on. So guys, that is it. Um, if you're mixing glaze for the first time on your own, it can be a little intimidating. So I hope that that helps you um, figure out, you know, the technique of mixing a dry glaze. And I hope this video, um, if you know how to mix dry glaze, I hope this video maybe gave you some tips that you never knew before. Um, so yeah, um, I hope you have a good day and thanks for watching.